Hello everyone, welcome to Crazy Geeks and it's me Rosen Sresta. On today's session we'll be talking about how to pass an object as an argument to the corresponding member function. As we already know, we can pass any number and types of argument to the corresponding member function. Talking about uh, passing object as an argument to the member function, it's very much helpful regarding the handling of the large and complex projects. In this process, what you basically do is we pass an object as an argument so that we can initialize one object with the information provided from another object. I don't know whether it's making some sense or any sense at all. That's why uh, let's proceed towards the program itself. Let me create one class named as test and uh, prepare the class definition with the required stuffs. I'm declaring the variable is x and let me write some methods and uh, before moving out the discussion related with class and object that is what is class and what is object is out of the scope of this current session so please bear with me. Now let's uh, write one method for setting the values value of x equals a that is whatever value is going to be passed here is going to be assigned to the variable x now uh, let's write one method op for displaying the output x is value of x now inside the main block I'll be creating one object t1 and setting the value of x is 22 by passing the value 22 22 is being passed here x equals 22 now let's verify by displaying the result x is 22 no problem now let's create another object test t2 t2 dot i n i'm passing the same number 22 and output Again, it displays the same information x is 22 and x is 22 this is related with t1 and this one is related with t2 now uh, this is just for the demonstration purpose that's why I'm playing around with single variable if there were a large number of variables and informations in order to handle those data or informations we have to repeat the process that is we'll be opting for some redundant coding redundant coding is not considered cool approach at all so uh, what I intend to do here in this case is rather than repeating the process uh, for the actual information and let's say uh, we need all the information related with this particular object t1 in the domain of t2 then passing object as an argument in the member function fits in for that I'm writing one function named as fn and on argument part I'll be obviously uh, writing object let's say t is the name of the object now what we'll be doing is x equals t dot x whatever information is being passed assign it to the variable x now soon after the creation of the object t2 I'm going to remove this one and write t2 dot fn now in this part we'll be passing whose information we need to make available in this case it's t1 that's why I'm passing t1 now what happens here is I've created object t1 and make a, a function called to in by passing 22 x equals 22 t1 dot op x is 22 now on this part object t2 is being created t2 dot fn here we are passing t1 it implies whatever information are related with t1 make that available to the current object and current object in this case is t2 this is the beauty of passing object is an argument to the corresponding member functions now if we compile and run this program cool 
x is 22 x is 22 that is whatever information was related with t1 is now available with t2 that is we are passing one object and making the informations associated with that particular object available to the current object i guess it's so far so good uh, we can pass any number of information for instance uh, there will be x and y variables y equals b test t what about handling it this way y equals t dot y x is x uh, and y is value of y Whoa. 22 33 to wonder to open no problem making function call okay let's try to run this program t1.in 22 and 33 are being passed then output x is 22 and y is 33 on this part t2 we are passing object t1 uh, let's run this program wow I've done silly mistake t1 and t2 uh, let's again build and run object t2 is being created here so oh no come on I'm carrying out lots of silly mistakes here okay <laughs> uh, it's third time lucky x is 22 and y is 33 uh, no problem uh, this is how you make the information associated with an object available to the current object now you can uh, proceed by making any number of objects and passing those information uh, let's uh, spice it a bit more i'm creating new object i'm not taking any risks uh, this time around tobz and uh, I'm not going to play around with output this time. Uh, let's write something like tobz dot in and pass. Uh, let's say thirty three and twenty two, some random numbers. Then on the fn, what I need to do is I need to let's say pass two objects t1 and t obj t2 is our current object now it should have the information associated with t1 as well as t obj uh, i will be making slight sense uh, test tn uh, x equals t dot x y equals t dot y uh, that's totally cool now what i intend to do is i'll be playing around with the summation of 22 and 33 and 33 and 22 that is t dot x plus t n dot x t dot y plus t n dot y now x and y should be sensed uh, let's check here by displaying tobz once tobz dot op and now let's run initially x is 33 and y is 22 now we have passed two objects as an argument object t1 and object tobz and we have apart from the operation of summation of x and x y and y of two different objects mm, in order to make it more clear you can send some values like 22 33 and 44 and let's say 33 uh, this would display 66 this one also should display 66 awesome 
Okay, guys, uh, I guess this was uh, much helpful regarding the passing of object as an argument and how you can play around with this particular concept. Uh, this is it for now. If you guys haven't still subscribed to, to this particular channel, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the bell as well. Uh, I'll be catching you guys in the next video with some more interesting stuff. Till then, have a nice time.